So I was recently browsing some Astro stores and I noticed that the price of a particular standalone auto guider, namely the La Certa M Gen 3, increased by quite a bit. A delta of 200 euros. So you'd be paying 1000 bucks in total for such a system. Wow. This fact, in combination with my love for the Steam Deck, which has been, well, my joy for the last few weeks gave me the inspiration to see what is possible with open source programs such as Ecos on a Raspberry Pi, for this case in a DIY project for a standalone autoguider. If you don't know what a standalone autoguider is, it is a device which connects to your mount via the autoguider port of your system and provides autoguiding capabilities without a laptop or PC. This system is mostly used when shooting with normal camera bodies such as this one and not with astrocams. So with a system like the MGen, you get a camera, a controller unit and an interface. But what if you don't want to pay these 1000 bucks and instead build a little system yourself, DIY style? Well, you're in the right place. If you're following me for a longer time, you know that I started my Astro journey with a Raspberry Pi running the AstroBerry image to control my Astro rig. One thing that annoyed me big time was the connectivity issue over Wi-Fi when connecting via remote software. But we're skipping over this problem completely with this concept, trust me. The previous months with my big rig I was out shooting the stars controlled by my little Nina PC but I thought about having two rigs running simultaneously or just one single one as an easy to set up rig with a scope, DSLM and autoguiding system. In this equation only one thing is missing so buckle up folks as we're gonna build ourselves a tiny open source standalone DIY autoguider system running PHD2 and Ecos on Ubuntu. What a bunch of words. Coming up. Before we get into the meat and potatoes of the video, I want to give you an overview of the content of this video. I'll divide the topic into two separate videos. In the first one, we'll check out a quick overview of the system, followed by the motivation or advantages of the solution compared to the engine, and of course the hardware requirements plus the setup. In the second part, we'll check out the software and how to set it up and a real-world demonstration with a session under the night sky. As briefly mentioned in the video, we'll be using a Pi running Ubuntu to manage and control our mount and telescope, even without a home network or additional remote PC, completely standalone. In my past, I was using a Pi image called AstroBerry, which was based off of the Raspbian distro. For this application, I wanted to try out the Ubuntu distribution in the Pi version in 64-bit. But why actually use a DIY approach and not go for an off-the-shelf solution? Let me briefly tell you what I think, why I think the Pi solution has advantages compared to the competitors. And I got this here in my list. I've noted down some advantages that I see compared to the competitors. With the Raspberry Pi solution, you can incorporate the mount orientation by using the Indie drivers and Echos. This means it requires no calibration when slewing, so your autoguider already knows the orientation and how it needs to compensate the pulses in a different direction and also uh, it will be known when the meridian flip i.e. when your target uh, goes over the zenith and then your mount orientation needs to switch from east to west and also it will adjust appropriately to the meridian flip 
The second one would be um, you can utilize the full ECOS capabilities, which means camera control. You have a sky data bank with a lot of targets in there. You have plate solving. You can slew to your target with a given slew coordinates or with a calculated solution, um, which worked quite fine. Uh, Astrocam control. With the others, I don't think you can control an Astrocam without any display or something. So only for diesel M, diesel R use cases, the um, M gen for example. And uh, you also can take and capture calibration frame libraries. And of course you have remote slew control. So you can use the interface of the pie to control the mount even. Also for visual observing, nice. You have the ability to multi-star guiding, which the MGen3 for example has, but the older versions don't have this feature. Of course, you also get the updates of the software uh, of normal regular PHD2. Then um, you get the full Raspberry Pi and Ubuntu experience, which means um, you have many software utilities. You can use uh, additional tools. You can use a lot of uh, third-party equipment and periphery, uh, plug in a GPS dongle for example in order to not uh, having to enter the time and location every time for example. So that could be an option here. And with my solution you also get a big touch screen to control the AstroCam or your session. Um, for example, when that is helpful when trying to find uh, focus on a guide cam instead of like a little display. So you get a big screen and you can easily, um, on the full resolution of the screen, you can easily see how sharp the stars are. Maybe even use a tiny button of mask for that. That's your option. But big screen works great in the cold too. Tried that out already. And uh, compared. I know it's not a auto guider system, but I, I would assume some people also use the ASI, uh, the ZWO environment with the ASI Air, for example. And like this, you're not limited to only the ZWO products. So basically all indie driver supported equipment is being uh, supported here, of course, as well. Mm. And for the last point, which is my uh, highlight, I would argue with, and that's how I started this introduction here, is that it is actually cheaper than the off-the-shelf products you can purchase. And for that, I've created also a little calculation overview, a little table. And uh, of course, always keep in mind, it gets even cheaper if you already own some of the parts, which for me was actually everything except for the scope, uh, for, except for the screen and uh, mounting bracket. So let me scroll over here real quick. So we'll start off. Uh, I have a description and price on my table here. And what you need um, for my solution would be the Raspberry Pi 4, um, which for the Ubuntu um, install is actually the recommended version. Um, if you want to use the Astroberry image with another distribution, another distro, uh, for example, Raspbian Buster or something, or even the newer ones, um, you can get for can go for older Pis. But I am using the Pi 4. I already own it for like a few years, and I bought it cheap, <laughs> well before the semiconductor crisis and the um, low parts availability. So currently. I'm calculating with 50 to 100 euros, 100 euros here. If you want to purchase it now, I would assume in some, um, would assume in some months, years, it will become cheaper again. <laughs> but even maybe have it lying around already. Then a guide cam, um, you can go with around 250 euros. Then add on top the guide scope. Of course, that's necessary too. Um, your guide cam and guide scope should appropriately match. Um, Together, additionally, we need the touchscreen plus housing, which is 140 euros for the 10 inch version. There is a 7 inch version, which is a bit cheaper, I think 100 euros. But I wanted to have something big where you can easily click on things and don't have to deal with uh, annoying touchscreen uh, uncertainties and not hitting the correct things. Then uh, for the mounting, I added two 20 to 50 euros on top. 
if you are very handy and uh, you know your craftsmanship, then I think uh, you can build something on your own or maybe don't even require any money on that. But I used a visa mount for that. I think 70 by 70 millimeters, that's on the back. And then a um, four, one fourth inch screw holder to mount it on the side of my mount. So in sum, uh, as a summary, we end up with the most expensive version, um, a, so the worst case, at six, 640 euros. Um, and if you want to go with the basic version, means um, the lowest price for the Pi, guide scope, and, and also the lower version of the touchscreen, then we'll end up somewhere 500 to 550 euros. Always, as I said in the beginning, keep in mind that if you already own some of the parts, which I could imagine you already have a guide cam and a scope, then big portion of the of the money is not needed. And if you compare that to the current um, third party suppliers with 1000 euros, and I think the other solution, which I don't know the name of, is at 800, 850 euros, you can save even uh, big on the money. For me, it was only the 140 euros for the touchscreen plus housing and a bit for the mounting. So maybe 160, 70 euros. And to get me a standalone auto guider system, which is actually quite impressive. Let's get back on track now to the next section. In the price comparison, you could roughly get an idea of the parts that are required. In the most basic form, as a standalone auto guider, you will need a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. Version 4 is preferred, especially when running Ubuntu. The EV SIF touchscreen display plus housing, the 10 inch variant for me, as explained, as it's easier to see and utilize with touch control. A guide camera, a guide scope, a USB 3 cable, a USB cable to connect the mount, a 12 volt power supply for the Pi, the AC supply is included with the display, a micro SD card, duh, and I'm using a 64 gigabyte card for that. Then we have some optional stuff. Uh, you can use a remote keyboard or a mouse. I'm using a device called RII. A Visa 75 by 75 to one inch uh, adapter because the back of the touchscreen housing has a Visa 75 uh, millimeter mount a tripod or a mounting solution where you want to um, adjust uh, where you want to set up your display auto guider close to the telescope for example and another one could be a usb hub if you want to follow and use the same equipment then i'll show you in this quick montage how you'd set up the evsif touchscreen display housing with the pi please be advised that you should have your final micro sd card for this setup if you don't know how to do that, I'd advise you to look up a basic tutorial. There are plenty good beginner guides out there and it's really not that difficult. So here in a quick guide. Download your compatible image. For me it is Ubuntu for the Raspberry Pi. 64-bit for the Pi 4. You can use your favorite distro. It should end with a .img or be a zip file. Then download the program Berliner Etcher and execute it. Insert a formatted microSD with a compatible adapter into your PC and select the drive in Berliner Etcher. Make sure that, is, that it is the correct drive because you will permanently erase all files on it if not. Now wait a couple minutes and you should be fine. Your image is ready. And back to the hardware. Quick tutorial over. Make sure to insert the functional microSD first, as this housing has no quick access for swapping the card. Then I unscrewed the six screws at the back of the housing. Here is the installation slot for the Pi. In order to connect the IOs, such as HDMI and USB power supply, we have to connect the special interfaces, which are also part of the package. As I'm using a Pi 4, I'm using the mini HDMI adapter and the Type-C adapter. Similar to motherboard I.O. shields, you need to select the appropriate hardware shield, appropriate shield for your Pi generation 2. Insert the interface circuit boards into both HDMI and USB port, 
put the correct I.O. bracket over the USB and Ethernet port and slide it into the housing. Be careful with the pins, that can be a bit tricky. After everything fits, fixate the Pi by using the four screws from the package. If you have heat sinks, now is a good time to put them on. Add the dust in the beginning. Depending on your USB situation, either solder the three touchscreen bus cables onto the board or do it like me and use one of the USB ports. A full standalone auto guiding function is still given even with three ports left. With the USB port solution, you need to fiddle the small cable through the I.O. shield and connect it onto the board. Double check if everything is safely mounted and connected, then mount the back panel of the screen. Now is the time to connect the 12 volt plug and power it on. By the way, the screen also uses a 5.5 times 2.1 mm film A port, so easy to connect to my power bank. After a few seconds, the booting process has finished and we are greeted by Ubuntu. Yay! Time to set the software up. But we're not going to do that in this part, as there will be a follow up video coming soon sometime. Thank you for watching until this part of the video. I hope you enjoyed this quick idea so far. Hopefully I could spark some ideas and uh, to, to bring the ingenuity, uh, to bring the uh, craftsmanship and a bit of tinkering back into the minds here and also on this channel. Um, I've, in the last few uh, weeks and months I was a bit more busy with work and some other stuff. But um, yeah, especially with the Steam Deck, I got back into uh, the open source section and also the uh, Linux department with uh, some different distros trying out stuff and uh, I was amazed how much games actually ran on the Steam Deck and <laughs> how they managed to do that. So I wanted to give the uh, yeah, Astroberry or rather the Ecos environment uh, another chance and I think for this project it's actually a very fine solution. My name is Chris. You've been watching Chris's Observable Universe and if you enjoyed it, please, you know, do the stuff with the buttons. <laughs> Have a nice day, night, wherever you are. Bye!